Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about Rebel Moon, the movie that came out on Netflix. The Zack Snyder Star Wars type movie. Um, let's talk about it. Modern movie review. review. Alrighty, so right off the bat, I want to go ahead and say this. Um, I personally have enjoyed this movie a lot more than a lot of other people online seem to have, you know, felt about it. I feel like a lot of people have been posting their reviews online. A lot of people have called it, like, a waste of time. They've called it uh, terrible. They've called it, you know, very emotionless, which I will agree with some of those statements when I get further into my review. But as of right now, I just want to go ahead and say I thought that it was better than a pretty decent amount of people out there seem to think it is. So obviously, before I get into this, I want to go ahead and issue a spoiler warning for people who have not seen the movie. It is on Netflix. You can go watch it right now if you want to Ugh. Alrighty, so as per usual, I'm going to go ahead and issue a spoiler warning before I get too far into this. Um, this movie is available on Netflix if you want to go watch it right now. Uh, but if you do not want this movie spoiled for you, go ahead and click off this video and maybe come back and watch it later. That being said, we're going to dive right into this. So I kind of want to start off with some of the pros and then get into some of the cons and then talk about why this movie feels insanely familiar, even though it's my first time ever seeing it. So right off the bat, some of the pros, um, I think that there are some beautiful cinematic shots. I think that there are definitely sequences where the CGI works incredibly well. I think that the sequence where I believe his name is like Tarek or Tarek or something like that um flies on this like weird bird pegasus thing I feel like that entire sequence is really cool I feel like um there is as per usual with any Zack Snyder film a lot of slow-mo sequences and there are occasionally some that I feel like work really well and then there's obviously the other ones where you're like this guy is just running why can't we just see that in full speed why is this in slow motion but um I think that for the most part this movie is paced relatively well it's got pretty decent action sequences and like I said the CGI for the most part looks pretty solid um I think that some of the weird lightsaber sword things look pretty cool and they have great sound design um there's a sequence or whatever where one woman is dragging two of them across the sword or whatever and it sounds like metal scraping across the floor and it's a really cool sound and I think that the design of the like lightsaber weird sword thingies work well right like I think it's okay um obviously very derivative of Star Wars and um that is kind of where this movie starts to lose me a little bit so action sequences work relatively well the characters work relatively well I think that for the most part the actors are all coming and bringing their a-game and they're doing all right um it is really nice to see um what's his name Ray Fisher again the guy who played Cyborg in the original Justice League movie um he hasn't been in anything I believe in a long time since those movies kind of screwed him over so it's nice to see him in this um I don't think he really does much in this as with the majority of the actors and actresses in this movie I feel like um a lot of the characters don't get much character development and it's really weird because in my opinion it kind of feels like what happens here is Zack Snyder wanted us to just dive right into a world that has already been established, that's already existed, that like these characters have already had interactions, they have reputations, and they tried just immediately giving these characters a whole lot of arcs, a whole lot of depth, and what I feel like he really fell flat on is the fact that we as the audience haven't had a chance to meet these characters yet. So sometimes they're having some deep conversations and you feel like you've missed a lot because, oh, apparently these people have already interacted before before the movie, it's never been addressed, and all of a sudden we just kind of need to take their word for the fact that they were close friends on whatever planet, whatever, many years ago, and they have this kind of unspoken friendship. And then as well, well with that, there are a lot of sequences where it feels like it should be really emotional because, oh no, this person is currently, you know, being chained up and they're going to die or something like that. But at the same time, we don't know the characters. We don't know the connections that the characters have to the other characters. And it kind of overall just kind of does feel emotionless in that statement. I will agree with that review that I've seen that has said that this movie is relatively emotionless. Um, there are a lot of sequences like that where it should feel a lot more triumphant than it does, but it also just feels incredibly, incredibly manufactured. Um, I think that these villains are way over the top evil, that whenever we have a moment of hope and there's like good humanity shown within, you know, those ranks and stuff like that, it doesn't land as well as it probably should because everything is just so over the top. But that being said, I'm going to kind of start talking about things I feel like are kind of derivative in this movie and kind of talk about things that kind of took me out of the movie a little bit because I liked it but then there were these couple of things that kind of took them down a little bit so I'm gonna dive into those. So overall I want to say one thing that the Rebel Moon movie tried to do is create a very original story, try to be its very own unique thing, try to have its own self-identity and I think that it's very interesting how he was able to accomplish that while also making it feel like so many other movies. There's aspects of it that feels kind of like Narnia. Like I said, the scene where Tarek flies on this weird, like, bird 
creature or whatever that feels like a creature that you would see in Narnia, maybe Harry Potter. Um, very magical in that sense. Um, there's a lot of sequences where we see like droids being treated terribly, which reminds us a lot of Star Wars. Um, there's a character who literally looks like Andor, feels like character. I'm pretty sure his character is literally supposed to be Andor, but he's in this. Um, and the actor who plays him even kind of looks like Andor. Everything about that, I'm kind of like, you didn't need to be as on the nose with that one. Um, the movie opens up, and I know that as a diehard Marvel fan, I might be biased, and this might just be me. Um, the movie opens up in outer space, and we're watching stuff in space, a little, like, pan of the ship, and then these portals and stuff like that that's going on in outer space. And it is set to a monologue narration from Anthony Hopkins. I love Anthony Hopkins. If you're a Marvel fan and you're wondering where I'm going with this, Anthony Hopkins, for those of you guys who do not know, voices, not voices, he plays Odin in the MCU. And the first Thor movie starts off with a narration that shows, like, panning shots from, like, across the galaxies, across the universe or whatever. And then it zooms into Asgard and it shows our very triumphant landscape. And this movie does almost the exact same thing when it opens up. You have Anthony Hopkins giving this monologue about all these things that have happened, why this person is evil, and what they're doing, and all the torment that they're bringing to the galaxy, and then it eventually pans us onto where we're focusing our beginning of our story on, on this little small farming village that uh, is about to be, you know, going through a lot of hardship later in the movie, and um, it's just so weird to me because, like, it's trying its best to be original, but then there's sequences like that where it's like, Anthony Hopkins is great. Anthony Hopkins is a good actor. He's great as a voice actor on this. I actually really loved everything about his little droid in this movie. And um, I also just really, really liked um, how that opened. But it's just because it's Anthony Hopkins and it's set in outer space and it starts exactly like that. It is hard to not immediately be like, wow, this is going to feel like a lot of other movie movies. And then, like I said, they have people with little blasters that shoot little ray guns, which feels a lot like Star Wars. And the fact that they miss like 97% of their shots feels like stormtroopers, because I swear to God, there are so many sequences where our main character should have probably already died because in the bar fight, she had a 4v1. They all had guns. And not a single person could land a single shot on her. And for the most part, it's not like she's, like, doing some, like, cool matrix, like, blocking the bullets or anything like that. They just are straight up missing because they suck. And then there's also moments where it's, like, in that same exact scene, she's using a table that seems like a very flimsy table. She could easily flip around and throw it around or whatever. And it's taking, like, seven or eight shots from these little fire blaster things. So now I'm having a hard time believing that if she got hit by this fire blaster, it would even mean anything because a wooden table can withstand the damage that's happening to this. But that's, that's neither here nor there. That's just a rant that I wanted to make. Um, and then another thing, um, while we're still talking about the topic of, like, things being derivative and feeling like other movies, um, there are a lot of sequences, like, uh, what's it called? There's a character who gets introduced. I don't even know their name because at this point, this is after they introduced us to, like, nine other characters and everybody's getting a really weird space name. And um, there's this girl. She's a samurai, basically. She does the sequence I mentioned earlier where there's two swords being dragged on the floor. Um, everything with her fighting style and, like, the people that she's fighting against feels so much like an old Japanese samurai movie. And, like, I don't mean that as a bad thing, but I'm just saying that, like, this movie feels like... Uh, what? What the fuck? Ah, I was blanking on his name for a second. This movie feels like Zack Snyder. I was about to say James Gunn for some reason. I don't know. I'm thinking DC and that's where my brain went for some reason. But um, Zack Snyder feels like he tried to come up with something original and he's like, okay, let's just, um, you know what, Narnia, sprinkle some of that in there. Okay, um, what else do we got? We got any movie that takes place in outer space ever. Yes, yeah, sprinkle a little bit of that in there. Um, ooh, we could add some, like, old sci-fi, like, Karate Kid type movies, or we could add some, you know, like, really throwback samurai movies, um, and, like, it really just feels like a giant conglomeration of a bunch of different movies, and then something else that sucks about it is, oh, I forgot to mention, one of the biggest derivative things, the main, the main villain is literally just, like, Hitler, basically, and, um, it's really, really bad they're using the Nazis, which, I mean, it works, they're terrible villains, they're easy to hate, which I think is a good thing when you're making a villain, you want somebody who people hate, um, but, like, man, it, they're, they're good villains in the sense that, like, they feel scary, but they're bad villains in the sense that, like, they have no, like, depth to them at all, they're literally just, like, why are they bad? Because they are, that's it, they're evil, they have no problems with killing people, 
cool. That's that's a great villain right there. Um, and then also the villain is played by the guy who, once again, as a Marvel fan, uh, he plays Ajax in uh, what's it called, Deadpool. And literally the second I saw him, I was like, oh my god, it's the bad guy from the uh, first Deadpool movie. And I couldn't help but like just keep thinking, oh my god it's the villain from the first Deadpool movie and he plays it the exact same like that actor is literally playing basically the exact same character and I was just like wow it is hard to unsee that because he's not putting any like different energy or anything into this role which is really weird um but yeah this movie is interesting there's a lot of sci-fi moments that I think are pretty cool um the spaceships are pretty cool I believe his name is Charlie Hunnam for some reason my mind is like blanking on his name right now um but the Irish actor who's in this incredibly good he kills it in literally every single sequence that he's in i absolutely love him in this um the main actress i think she's doing pretty good the girl who plays cora um this movie does feel incomplete which it's a part one but i mean some part ones like spider-man across the spider-verse is originally going to be a part one that movie has a complete story like i think that that's something that a lot of these part ones kind of really fail at especially with hollywood right now is they feel like they can just release a movie in two separate parts and that's fine. But in my opinion, if you're going to do that, you should film both of the movies at the exact same time and then release them both around the same time. And maybe like, obviously, if you can't do it at the same time, do it like a couple of months apart, because now I don't know how long we're going to have to wait for part two, but we have half a story right now. And it feels not satisfying at all because we don't get any conclusion. And I feel like that's a massive like L. Like, I hate that. But yeah, um, that being said, if I had to rank this movie, not rank this movie, if I had to give this movie a movie rating, um, I probably would give it like a 60 out of 100. I don't think it's that bad, but I don't think it's that great. And like I said, um, they introduced so many characters that like, it's really hard to feel connected to any of these characters at all in this movie. And this entire movie basically just feels like a bunch of setup for what could potentially be a better second part. But I don't know. That being said, that was it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow, bow, bow. He wanted me to go, but first I did this. We planned a day, then we did this. Want to be in love with the girls with the kisses. Don't give a damn, I'll rid this. I like this when I run the distance. I run a fine page for ballistics. I want to live within the business. Buy more than what's on the clearances. You're getting big because I know you're a physicist. I want to deny this shit. I'm unlimited.